Hey everyone, it's uh, Scott Norris here. So week one in uh, self-isolation, uh, gotten a lot of things done. Uh, and some of those are videos. So uh, this is, I was gonna, at the end of the last video series of this Blueprinting 101 is, I was gonna talk maybe about extensibility, but I thought, hang on, there's a few things I haven't covered. Uh, one of those being dynamic networks and the second being, let's actually do a cloud native. Like, you know, not everyone wants to deploy IaaS. Um, based workloads, maybe they want to make use of uh, Azure um, PaaS offerings and, and, and SaaS offerings and whatnot, uh, as well as AWS, right? So we'll cover that probably in the next one. So in this one, I'm going to have a look at um, our uh, networking uh, dynamically. So let's have a look at our last one. So we'll, we'll, we'll take off from our Blueprinting 101. So before we're choosing our networks, we're deploying to it. Um, and now really what it is at the end of the day, um, I'll just first off what I'll do is to make this work, let's start with our infrastructure. So we've got our network profiles. So we've talked a little bit about these uh, previously and I've covered them in other videos. Uh, but what we're using out of these is our on-demand portion of it. So if you come and have a look at this vSphere one, so vSphere is going to have a lot more options than the cloud providers because you're basically providing, you know, you, uh, when you access AWS and, and, and um, Azure's networking, you're, you're accessing, accessing a top level API, right? Um, where on uh, vSphere and on-prem, you've sort of created that. So you have to tell it where it needs to go and whatnot. Yeah, that's, that's not been abstracted. So this is the abstraction layer for that. So if we have a look at our network policies, and we can see I've got an isolation policy here called uh, create on demand. Now there is also create on demand security group. So you can have different profiles based on what you want to do. Uh, and use tags to select them. So if we have a look at here, we've got our tr my transport zone, which is my overlay transport zone. We've got my external network. So this is for NATing and whatnot. So what's your external IP address going to come from? Uh, so that's my cloud deployment uh, uh, network, which is a existing one already. Uh, then we have our T2, T0 logical router, uh, whichever one you want to do. So obviously with NSXT supports multiple uh, T0s now. Uh, maybe you want to connect to you know, one for different projects or maybe different customers if you're a cloud provider or whatnot. And then we've got our uh, edge, edge cluster that the services are gonna be created on. And then we actually can choose, so this is pretty cool. So we can configure our IPAM to have an external so we can connect to our IPAM provider that we've plugged in. Now I haven't covered that in any of the videos yet, but basically Infoblox is available as of now, uh, and VMware has opened a, a full SDK. So you can, you can actually, um, like some organizations I've gone to, they've actually written their own IPAM and they have over many years. And you know, they've upgraded it and they've kept it maintained. Uh, and if you wanted to, you could actually use the SDK to integrate with that, right? As long as it's obviously got a REST-like API. So um, you can pretty much use any now because the SDK is out, but um, there's, a, there's a configurable out of the box info blocks uh, is available. Otherwise you can use internal. So VRA is going to manage that. You've got your your CIDR address. So this is the 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 base address that I want to use. Um, and then we go. Well, what are we going to cut out? So you know, I want slash twenty sevens, twenty fives, twenty sixes, whatever makes sense for your organization. Right at the end of the day. So and then we choose whether we want static or DHCP. So if you choose both, like I have here, it means it actually reserves half for static and half for DHCP. Um, otherwise, you can go few, all for static, all for DHCP, right? So I'm just going to leave it as that. That gives me a nice mix. Um, and under the other network profiles, so if you have a look at AWS, for instance, uh, we can have our network policy exam, example, exactly the same thing. Um, and we can see here that gives you a little bit of a, um, a blurb about it. But you select your network domain, your subnet, external subnet. Uh, as well as your subnet size that you want to carve it out as, uh, and exact same for Azure, right? Um, it's all it's all pretty much the same. So we look at that. I've got my network domain and whatnot, right? Great. So, um, and this is the great thing about you know having it being agnostic instead of you having to manage uh, all the multiple clouds. And look, let's face it, a lot of organisations are wanting to run multiple clouds because why not? You know, they're all got their pros and their cons, and it makes sense to use specific whatever they're good at. Um, 
uh, for the organization for a specific purpose. Uh, you know, I've got organizations that have their production on AWS uh, and they do a lot of the development in Azure uh, because they want to use the EMSDN credits they get. Right, so they've been a bit more savvy with how they consume cloud rather than just going all in on one. Um, they place it where it makes sense for the business at the end of the day. Um, whether that's based on cost, performance, locality, doesn't really matter, right? It's it's a business requirement. Um, it gets placed somewhere. So we've got our we've got our networking. Uh, we can go back to our design. So previously under our networks we had type existing. So really, at the end of the day. We choose one of these. So outbound is natting. Private is like an isolated, fenced environment uh, with with you know security groups and other things in place. And we've got our public, which is you know public facing, public IP addressing. You've got to have all that available. So I'm just going to go outbound, and that's it. So let's actually try this out. So let's go uh, vSphere uh, on demand and choose the current draft. Choose vSphere endpoint, OS image, username, Ted, and password, deploy. All right, so hopefully that goes out and works. That's gonna make a fool of me. Uh, and then we can go back to our design and we can go deploy without changing a single, single thing in code. And let's lose Azure this time because I've used AWS and others in the past. I haven't used Azure yet. Um, and it works just the same on Azure. So let's do um, Azure on demand and current draft next choose Azure CentOS username will be Louise and password deploy all right that's gonna go off and do its thing all right let's have a look at our deployments now hopefully they're Oh yeah, so cool. We've got our history. Uh, it's actually creating the networking process right now. Uh, so what that's going to do is in NSX land, it's going to create the uh, T1 router, the uh, switch that it's going to be going on, so the logical segment. Uh, it's then it's going to create uh, a DHCP service and server uh, to be able to handle those requests that go onto there. Uh, and it's also going to create the NAT service and everything else um, as part of that. So it handles all that for you at the end of the day. So let's, um, all right, it's cool. That's creating. So actually let's log into my lab. All right. So let's have a look. So this would be, yeah, that'll be the latest one. And we'll be able to see it should be connected to this network. So uh, 327. So if you actually go and have a look at uh, networking, so this isn't the last one I was on. Let's close this and refresh that. There's the 327. So let's actually work back. So that's on DHCP. I was already in here. So there's our switching. 327. We can see we've got our uplink uh, logical switch uplink port, uh, for instance. Now oh, that's a a lot of ports there that's up uh, we've got our routers so if you've got a router it will be the same name so 327 so have a look at 327 we can see that it's been configured firewall wise uh, we can have a look at all well, the router ports will only have two um, so we've got our, our downstream and our upstream uh, and then we have our um, NAT it's all been done and we can see that the translated IP there is from that cloud network um, that I already had which is awesome that's all working and we've got our firewall rules as per normal uh, the routing if we actually have a look at route advertisement it will set up some of it so it's only going to do the NAT routes uh, so um, it automatically makes it as secure as possible uh, for the environment and if we have a look at DHCP uh, we've got our DHCP server there as we came in uh, that was there uh, we can see that the um, IP pool uh, is sitting here uh, so if you have a look at that we can see that that's our ranges right there so it's uh, dot what's that dot 18 to dot 30 cool and yeah well working
uh, like a dream. So that's handled everything for us. Our machine's been placed on a secure network and our application installed, all the rest of it. And we know that's, you know, it's it's secure, right? It's, it's all been handled for us. So let's uh, go back. And that will be done. So VSphere on demand now is done. Great. And Azure is done as well. So if we have a look at Azure, we've got our cloud network. So it's 3.30 there. Uh, let's actually log into here. Let's go to our virtual machines and I'll get it from there. Uh, there's our uh, virtual machine that we've created. Uh, let's go to networking. We can see that it, there's the 3.30 there that it's created. So let's go to that one. And I should have a 3.30 network interface. Great, I didn't want the network interface. I wanted the subnet. Here we go. So there's our subnet that's been created. So it's a slash 28. We've got 10 available. Uh, exactly how we uh, wanted it. Uh, we can go in there. Yeah, that's all been done there. There's our addressing. Uh, and that matches uh, the address that, you know, that has been done. So if we actually uh, go back, which machine, cool. So as you can see, it uses the name convention for that project. Now, you know, you can obviously make this whatever you want uh, and you can even name them. What I haven't done uh, in the, in the blueprints is that you can actually put a name to these things. So if we went to the network uh, and we under properties, you could use the name tag and that'll actually create the name of it rather than it just being uh, random and all. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that because the point of this is that we can do rapid development, rapid deployment um, across any one of our clouds uh, and using the same code uh, at the end of the day. And we want to tear this down at the end of it. And the great thing is it clears up all our networking stuff with it, right? Um, there's no mess left behind. Uh, so when we wipe these away and we go, right, we've, um, we're done with this. Uh, no need, no need for it anymore. We can then choose the action, delete this. Submit, and I can delete that one as well. Submit, uh, and that will go off, and that will tear down all those networking and everything. Cool. So, nice quick video. Uh, just a little bit of extra on what I haven't provided previously in my videos. Uh, next one, I'll just cover a cloud native service app. So, just to show how we can use, you know, actual cloud specific services like Lambda and um, API Gateway and those sort of things, right? Uh, and how we could use those. <clears throat> Till then. Keep saying, being locked indoors, and I'll see you next time. Cheers, bye.